going back Now I'm going to buy into all that Hey, hey, ain't going to hide Going to let all the fears lie Go for the nature, it's on my side Got a whole lot of love and growing in Hello, everyone. Welcome again to The New Now. I'm very delighted today to have as our guest, Harold Kotz. Some of you may know him from some of the explorations he's done over the years. I'm not going to uh, say I'll allow him to tell you in his own words, you know, what he's done. Some very esoteric and deep diving into what's going on in the planet, why it's going on, where we are, what the challenges could be with humanity, and, you know, where we could be going. Welcome, Harold, to the new now. How are you tonight? Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. I know it's late for you over there. I'm I'm basically fine, still struggling a bit with the disease, all sorts of it, um, but always looking at it from the healing side, from the spiritual growth side. So um, you can take a ruptured spleen with a laughing eye as well. <laughs> of course, of course. You know, I, I think I guess the energy on the planet these days is bringing us all into a mode of being challenged in one way or the other. You know, whether it's physical or financial or, or uh, structural, as in our ability to travel and to make the kind of lives that we would like to live. Uh, you know, on a, on a personal level, like I'm, I'm delighted to hear that you're, you know, coming along with, with the challenges. And, you know, how are you finding your life these days, let's say, in relation to some of the studies you've done as to what's going on in the planet, why it's going on the way that it's going, I'm going to leave many links below after the chat for our readers that they can do some uh, studies into the past of what Harold's done and what he's shown in some of the videos. He, he's got more than I can you know, talk about here. And it will allow you, uh, as you're interested in our dear viewers, to get a bit of a background on, on what he has uncovered you know, in relation to uh, the world. Uh, I'll, I'll let him say in his words, maybe you can give us a bit of background uh, you know, as to some of the studies you've done, why you've done them. Uh, and how that's helping or hindering your life in relation to how you would like to be alive in these days. Okay, I'll try to cut that as short as possible. Um, if you put a lot of topic to describe where I've been, I started with free energy, um, climate healing, according to Wilhelm Reich, and from there discovering that there's something going on in the sky called chemtrails, understanding humanism, from there understanding the black magic tradition we all come from, kind of. Uh, from there diving deep into bioenergetics and spiritual concept of actually what duality is and how the consciousness realm we live in is constructed how we are originally constructed if we take away this aspect of living duality because this is not our natural state it's just a phase we go through and from there this is kind of my latest um, focus approach core topic um, to do everything to come back to that natural state of unity consciousness um, growing completely out of duality business and from there <laughs> what i can say is life the universe actually taking this approach of mine quite seriously decided to go into a state of tolerance for um, not taking the quickest route so it's like on all levels, it's all in, show me your cards now. Mm -hmm. This is this is the time quality I, I, I perceive. Um, I've been working on things where I had the feeling, uh, oh, I can do that whenever the conditions are better, whenever the universe is giving me the funding or possibilities or connections to do it. At the moment, everything is rushing in, everything is happening at the same time. And uh, the only thing <laughs> I do is almost dying from a ruptured spleen because also the emo emotional level is cle clearing out and the last bastions of is 
experienced trauma of um, unhealed parts of myself get the asses kicked and go into healing and it's on the limit of what the vitals called body can take but it's all good it's all on the way and um, as I said you can take those things with the laughing eye as well what do you mean by tolerance of of uh of the challenges going on these days. Maybe you can expand on that for our viewers. I have the feeling things express themselves in a more and more holistic way. Right. So things like if you want to start a business and there's something wrong in your relationship, it's impossible anymore to start a business without fixing the relationship first. Mm. Call any bug in your spiritual setup um, that was something you lived with a year or two ago. You had hundreds of bugs and they were all sitting somewhere in your neck and in between your fingers and they were bugging you, but you took them one by one, you took your time and you made your life while taking care of that. And at the moment, it's like, like okay, you've come that far now we are talking tachlis now things are going to happen quick and fast and you need to be sure that you are there and um, heal on all levels so if everything is the time of life is not for this it's something and life is on me fixing it. And that has been quite a lot over the last month. It's as if we are approaching um, um, like plot points in human history where decisions need to be made in the right spirit. Mm -hmm. So spirits reset themselves to their default healthy condition to be able to make the right decision in the point of the timeline where they need to be made. This is how it feels like. I can't tell you how far these points and timelines are away at the moment, but uh, this is the internal part. And it, at the same time, you can observe the external world and it looks quite like a, um, beautiful, precise reflection of those inner processes. We have only this tiny, uh, it's more like, like a glimpse of uh, corporate media control covering the, the real story happening. Mm. Corporate media is the only thing they still have got to keep up their delusion. And they're holding on to it with the last bits and pieces of forces. And when this tears apart, which is going to happen soon, this is terrible, then reality is the world become visible under that. And this is a quite interesting moment if you if you feel into this, because um, I'm I'm not the one who is perceiving his life as action reaction patterns for me reality is created by perception and the reality that is going to be uncovered under this layer of corporate lies can be everything this reality is not defined yet because it has not been yet hasn't it been what yet i missed that last word it hasn't been perceived yet. Mm. Reality is created by perception. And because we haven't looked under the curtain and behind the curtain into the deepest holes of the, of the rabbit holes, we don't know what, the, what we find there and therefore it's not defined yet. Um, and with this also, our past is not defined yet. This is how higher dimensional physics create timelines. It's not always the same past we are sitting on. 
it depends on who we are, what we discover is our past. And as we know from Mandela effect, the past can change in between because we are sitting on a converging and diverging set of timelines that only unites in the now. So we have hundreds of possible futures that evolve out of hundreds of given pasts and the one we are on depends on our perception and our changing perception now. So it would under the idea is covered by this and is this is quite a crucial moment. Yes. I mean, is that what you mean by, by the bugs on the body? You're dealing your own energetic challenges that happen to be sitting with you, you know, in your now, in relation to what you'd like to make of your present yes. time? Yes. At, at the moment, for example, we, we can talk with what's really there because this is the strongest expression I can, can give in the moment. At the moment, I'm trying to deal with... Uh, uh, covert narcissism and people these are codependencies. This is a personal thing. I experience these patterns in my life. People who know me know me that I kind of identify with a people pleaser with all the drawbacks and stupidities <laughs> the pattern has internalized. And I kept on colliding with narcissists who tried to abuse me. And this was kind of default structure for years that I had these relationships in my life. And now I need to come clear. And um, for the last 48 hours, I've been writing a paper, um, basically analyzing all the personal experience, comparing it to the clinical, comparing it to healing methods coming from the more shamanic traditions to find out what actually can be found in this structure because I know when I heal my codependent structures that relate myself to narcissists, I know all the power play on this planet, all the shadow Okay, we've lost you for a moment here, Harold. Uh, so maybe we can go back a minute because you were sharing some very interesting perspectives on what's going on. Can, can you hear me all right? Lost. Um, okay. Um, we lost you for the I, I know that I have those. Last, yeah, I'll make the, the last minute. I Knowing that, that I personally, in my personal life, have those codependent relationships with narcissism in me in an unhealed state. Um, as long as I stay in this unhealed state, I can only expect the universe to express itself in similar patterns. And those you find between the bark, dark cabal, the deep state, and the people-pleasing citizens that obey and follow the rules and try to please all those money-hungry power people. And as long as I don't heal the condition in me, whatever is revealed when things change will reflect that back on me. So, of course, I, I want when, when things unravel and develop, I want to live in a world where everybody is uh, in 100% self-responsibility, stopped playing drama triangle interaction games. There are no victims, there are no perpetrators, there are no saviors anymore. And everybody is just singing, dancing and taking care of this beautiful planet. This is what I want to, 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 to see unfolding know, as of the next step. But I can only expect that if I take the necessary healing steps within myself. Mm. And because I feel this tremendous pressure of things pushing itself through my personal development into reality, I have the feeling, okay, something is happening quite soon. Like 
plot point. You mean on a personal level? Something's uh, coming? Or on a macro level? On the macro level. I see, I feel I am subject to the personal level, but by experiencing the intensity and the urgency of things, I know that we are preparing for things on the macro level. Very interesting. I mean, I, I'm of a similar notion that if you want to you know, go play in a land of plenty, you have to make yourself uh, susceptible and ready to become a partner in you know, co-creating or creating the kind of life you would like to live. And I think Harold is, is really facing something, you know, through his spleen and I've had my physical challenges and I've talked with many others that have had them as well. Uh, uh, and what a lot of people run away from is, is the pain you have to face on an internal level, to make yourself ready to allow the extra energy to come down and show you what's possible, you know, in your life and what you can do. And, and then of course, if you're sick, whether it's energetically, physically, emotionally, uh, you know, take your pick, you're not really allowing the best of yourself to come out and thus to uh, co-create in the possibilities. I think that the, the curtain coming down, you know, if you want to look at it that way, as Harold mentioned, that the, the corporate media, more people seeing through the garbage that's gone on and the lies, you know, every day I talk to new people that have uh, opened their eyes more because a lot of them have no choice. You know, that would be my opinion. And, and, and you know, you, you're going to have to really be asleep to not notice you know, that a lot of the governments don't have your best interests at hand and, and a lot of the, the corporate stuff is obvious, you know, uh, BS for lack of a better way to put it. And, uh, you know, no matter what they say, they're not trying to help you. It's obvious you're being hindered if you follow through with the, the, the narrative of the day that's coming through with TVs and what have you. So, uh, you know, I, I appreciate what you're sharing with, with us here. Harold. It's, it's really nice to see like, like someone who's done you know, I look at what's going on, the alternative, the monsters on the planet, let's say the, 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 the parasites, you know, uh, you, you study the black goo, as, 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 as you said, which has come up, I'm sure, in probably almost all of your talks, you know, the spider monsters that are around, you can look at the, you can call them reptiles, you can call them fifth dimensional parasites, which I guess is how I view things. But the bottom line is, is, you know, once you are, uh, make yourself sacrosanct, uh, these, uh, let's say, dark energies have less of an effect on you. Is, is that uh, kind of uh, what, what you're, you're coming to as well? What, what I sense is um, uh, heading forward to these plot points of human history. Um, it's like we, we are facing an event where we see splitting timelines. And this process of splitting timelines, it has a foreplay. In this foreplay on the astral realm, the astral realm is already splitting up. The astral is never in the now. The astral is kind of looking into the future, looking into the past. We couldn't be clairvoyant without that. So it's not defined in the now. So it has its strand developing into the future. And it already kind of, I have the feeling, it sought sorts itself according to spiritual qualities. We have like a third density astral realm, fourth density astral realm, a fifth density astral realm, and maybe, maybe even a separate sixth density astral realm developing slowly. And people still can shift from one density on to another. If they develop, if they make their homework, if they spiritually grow, if they let go of dualistic concepts and stop perceiving the darkness because we are afraid of the darkness, then they can disconnect and they just jump into the next higher density on the astral. And when it comes to this real splitting of timelines that is in the prophecies, they will just go with the astral realm they ended up in. And it's not that it's at any time too late to shift, but apparently less and less and less and less people will shift because everybody ends up exactly where he's supposed to be over the years till that point comes. This is how I perceive this process. Still, in, in this position, I can freely decide. I can sit down, go into meditative state and decide I perceive fifth density and then reality looks in a certain way. 
when I go down to the fourth density, I'm hit by this entire panic and fear of the corona victims. And I say, whoa, no, 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 no. I'm not going to stay here for more than three seconds. This is fucking creepy. Sorry, I don't know where we broadcast. I'm allowed to swear or not. I would agree. And and if if you go to the sixth density, um, you can really experience unity consciousness and everything you see out there is fine. You know? It's all good because it's all just the choices people have made. And you can't interfere with that. It's like their karmic pattern evolving and they are exactly where they need to be. And if it's ugly at that point, it needs to be ugly and they need just to be supported and being held in a passionate relationship with what they're going through. And then you can help and assist to overcome things. And it's all beautiful, whatever it is. It's 100% non-judgmental. Mm. And you can give, even go higher in density. I made it up to nine, which again was qu quite creepy because it's no place where humans should be. It's like like in, in nine, it's nothing matters because everything is in you. It's a complete godly perspective. We have nothing to 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 do in. It's but it's possible to to just decide to go on to that level. And between eight, this is this angelic arrogance you face and um so so different qualities on different densities that really can be um, experienced in meditation and um, the, the very interesting thing is when it comes to the choices we have let's say between four and six at the moment um, really the perception of reality and the tangible future of reality really are completely different things you mean on a person part of this planet part of this planet might drown in a series of pandemics because people have decided to live in fear it's creational fear is creational you have the worst vision you can get and put yourself on the timeline that will accomplish exactly this vision is as creative as gratitude is. Mm. If, you, you know, if you need a parking space, yeah. if you need a parking space, you create yourself a parking space. We know this since this incredible book, Orders from the Universe, or whatever right. the English title is, came out. And you do it with gratitude. Mm. You say, thank you for the parking spot I will have when I arrive directly in front of my door and you get it it's reliable and um, this is how it kind of kind of works with fears as well so um, this is something not to make make them more scared this is something people who buy into this fake agenda of fake pandemics should be aware of it when they buy into this fear scenario, mm. they create quite ugly things voluntarily. Yeah, I think voluntarily is, is the key, you know, to notice that, uh, I mean, that's the, 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 the crux of the bad and the good rolled into one in that you can make things horrible voluntarily, you can also make things amazing voluntarily. You know, as Harold was saying, by facing whatever bugs or problems, challenges, fears, whatever's crawling in your system or body or energetic field, you know, it's there because it can be faced in my opinion. It's, you know, Harold's done tons of research over the years. We've come across so many others who have done, you know, deep dives and research over the years who've gone where most of us haven't, bring back the kind of information that in my opinion will allow uh, you to do your own work, to do your own research, to come to your own conclusions as to, uh, you know, how to make the kind of life you would like to live in. You know, we all have challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like Harold, what, what do you know energetically? What is the spleen supposedly for, like uh, on, 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 on a physical level and on an astral level? Have you done some studies in, in that direction? 
Um, the spleen, physically, it's cleaning your blood. It's sorting out all the infected parasitic red blood cells okay. and cleans the blood from neurotoxins. And the effect is if the spleen is working properly, your brain is clear, wow. crystal clear. You can think like a quantum computer. You can look. This was kind of the amazing. My, my spleen was partly paralyzed. It didn't work properly. I lost eyesight. And when it came back in, through this healing process, I, I remember a week ago, I was sitting in, in our guest room, staring at the dream catcher in the window. And I could see every single hair of every single feather from a distance of four meters and enjoy the beauty of all of them. Every single one was in my visual perception. And I remembered myself looking like this as a child. And then my sight got better because my processing capacities of the brain got worse. So I lost this highly high resolution site and it came back because suddenly my blood is cleaned again mm -hmm. on the spiritual level the spleen is self-worth self self-confidence and this is where it was connected to this people please and narcissism topic mm -hmm. that it's a lack of self-worth that makes you serve the wrong people or people who just carry the other end of a heavy stick. Let's not call it wrong. It is what it is. No, I, I found the same thing with, with it's really fascinating in all this work, you know, as complicated as it gets, it almost gets down to a simple level of becoming childlike again, not childish and, and remembering, you know, your imagination, you know, as I'm going through my own process, I'm seeing the way I used to see things when I was four and five, old memories are coming back, you know, my ideas of what I wanted to be in life. I, I feel strongly if you talk to someone who's four or five, you know, you're not going to get, they want to grow up and be a lawyer or they want to grow up and be a, a physicist. It, it, it's more of, you know, you get an imaginative uh, response from the children, you know, if they're allowed to be free in the ways that they can take a stick in a puddle and go to other realities in, in their in their dream state. And, and, you know, as I'm talking with Harold, what I'm finding is very beautiful and that, you know, obviously I'm not four or five anymore and, and neither is Harold and a lot of the people we talk to, but you know, all the things I missed and dreamed about and wanted to share with other beings when I was growing up and I was little before, you know, the monsters took hold and the schooling took hold and, and the, the parasitical paradigm of fear took hold and kind of started beating you in a certain direction. I mean, it was this growth of beauty and imagination and wonder uh, that I, I believe is a natural uh, desire, you know, for young boys and young girls and what they want to create, especially, I, I would say, young boys that want to go on that adventure of seeing and, and creating and being and, and a beautiful way of, of understanding. You know, you know, I've had some psychedelic experiences where I've experienced what Harold has mentioned in that, uh, you know, when I've done mushrooms or what have you, where you can see every flower petal, you know, and you, you look at, a, uh, mm -hmm. you see every bit of it and, and you'll see the winds moving together. And I've found that this, when I allow my consciousness to go back to where it was before I allowed it to get polluted in the various ways we've discussed in this topic already, that, you know, you could see energy moving when you were little, you could see the beings talking to you, you could talk with trees and flowers and the animals and what have you in ways that are beyond language. You know, and, uh, you know, it's allowing, mm -hmm. I, I find, you know, a lot of people don't understand, in my opinion, what Eden could be about if they want to call it Eden, you know, whatever you want to call this new way of being, you know, it's not that you are who you are, and then suddenly you have more hamburgers to eat, or you're richer, or you have, you know, you're more beautiful, or your wife is more beautiful, or you have six wives or whatever. It's almost like you transform yourself, you know, to become the being that can live in that sort of a reality, whether it's fourth, five, six, seven, eight dimensions, through, you know, you know, Harold is kind enough to be here talking with us today, honestly sharing, you know, a physical challenge that a lot of people might want to hide from and not, you know, bring to the forefront. And, and, and you know, he's honestly laying the challenges he's had in front of us. I was a people pleaser, you know, I'm, I'm this and I'm that, you know, everyone has their not such nice ways they've they've they've, uh, they've developed about being to themselves and others in life, you know, and it's by coming out, 
you know, and sharing it honestly, you know, as, as, as we're doing today, that, uh, you know, you lead by example and you get the opportunity to see it's not so bad to put your dirty laundry out there, you know, it, and, and people aren't going to be, I think people will be more loving with you. That's what I want to say. You know, and people look like they're more accepting if you're going, this is how I've been challenged and this is how I've been not so nice to myself and the people in my life. You don't get ostracized the way maybe your fear in your head is telling you. More you get the, uh, the support you need to heal yourself. I think, you, you know, you will meet the loving people in your community, whether they're next door or halfway across the world, as I am with Harold right now, you'll get an opportunity to develop these friendships in a community that uh, will support you in your growth. Mm -hmm. This is actually exactly how healing happens when when I reassemble my spirit from all the cracks and uh, losses and trauma and whatever got damaged on the way. Um, it's necessary to go back to the origins or either it's finding the the losses during this lifetime when ugly things happened in the childhood to revisit those events and volunteer to feel through them again. Mm -hmm. And then you find like the five old year child that got whatever. I don't want to go into it because there's still living people involved. Um, and you, you just revi you revisit it and you face your lost suppressed emotions and then this little child appears in front of you in your soul garden as a vision and he absorbs your love and you can breathe in him into your chest and reunite with a child that got lost and this also works with previous lifetimes if there's any crack in my spirit and i can't find the reason why it happened Mostly it's because it happened in former lifetimes. And then if the body is clean enough on the biochemical level, it's easy to just call those events in as well. And then you go like, okay, I remember what happened back then. And it's easy, easy if it's a victim trauma. You know, those are kindergarten. Okay, you, you, you had something to digest that was not convenient. You face the emotion you found too heavy back then. You finally stand in it, stand strong, express it through your body, and then you integrate it. But when it comes to perpetrator trauma, it's much heavier than the victim trauma because you need to deal with guilt. You need to deal with knowing what you've done to others. And then it's about balancing those medals, those karmic medals. Like we, in one lifetime, we experience the victim. In the other lifetime, we experience the perpetrator. And we can't put this coin that has those two sides back into our wallet unless we have seen both sides at the same time. And this is what these clearing processes are about. Um, I remember one, one healing session with a lady that refused to feel. And it was so strong, anything. She was completely mental. And it was so strong in her that her body decided to develop a brain tumor that um, needed to be removed by surgery and afterwards she could not suppress feeling anymore. And she was in dire straits because she, took, she couldn't take it. She was going nuts from all those emotions. This is the state I got to know her. And then <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful example because it's so simple. Just the question, what is it that you actually don't want to feel? And with this question asked in the right spirit, the pictures come and they go seeing your own baby slaughtered in front of your eyes, former lifetime. Going through that process, no healing, not accomplished. And then, okay, 
There must be something else. What did you not see yet? What is there else to be seen? And then she is dropped into, I don't know how many lifetimes, where the story repeated itself. Baby born, slaughtered, baby born, slaughtered, baby born, slaughtered in front of her eyes. And she was screaming the windows out of that building, processing that pain. And then it was the last question because still there was no healing in the room. She could not find peace. And then I said, and now you remember where you slaughtered the baby of a mother in front of her eyes. And I just dropped her into the memory. Because I knew, you know, this strong metal that is so strong on one side, it needs to have another side. And all she did over all those lifetimes was just refusing to accept the kickback of karma. She got into the victim position and refused to process her emotion because she did not want to accept how it feels like what she did to somebody else. And, and when she dropped into the, into the perpetrator trauma, it was all amazement. It completely dissolved and she started to laugh because suddenly she could be in compassion with all those perpetrators because she remembered how it feels like and it felt human to do something like that. It's not a beautiful act. It's done in despair. It's done in confusion. It's done running on completely weird mental concepts. But it's a human experience to be dropped into a situation like that, like it was human in her case to be dropped there. And then she realized that for all those babies is what, you know, you, you just kicked out of your body and you reincarnate. So what? The babies didn't really suffer. It was all in her imagination. So she could see all those different aspects of the story and make her peace with it. And this is just a very strong example in a very high simplicity of one and the other side. But actually, all human experience is kind of built in a similar way. We we'll make a decision, dive for experience, and this makes us lose ourselves. We can't experience separation when we don't damage ourselves. So we make the decision to do something stupid to bring us on a journey, and we completely lose it, trying to fix ourselves, but not by returning to the divine, just by applying mental concepts. And the more we think and the more we try, the worse it gets. Um, to the lowest point where actually everything is worse than just returning and accepting the initial pain of separation. This is the memory we start our journey with. It's hidden deep inside. Disconnecting from the divine is the deepest possible pain. And everything we experience afterwards is just a tiny little fraction of that. And it's too much for us. So we, we get scared and drive away from this, doing more stupid stuff, just not to experience this tiny little fraction until we realize there's no way around turning back to the divine and going home. And when this desire wakes up, this is when love comes. So this is where the fear-based life finish and the love-based life start. And then we we'll make this one decision, I want to return home. And by accepting this as an internal decision, we take on the entire pain of separation voluntarily. And after that, nothing can scare us. After that one decision, nothing can be worse than losing it again. And there we basically grab the power to take our steps to reassemble ourselves in voluntary healing. And everything else, the entire new age, halabalu, I heal you, you heal her thing, it's all not working because it's not what we are here for. We are here for 
losing it and reassembling ourselves because only this gives us the full experience we came here for. Very well put. No, I, I would say it's simple. It's, it's simple, but everyone has his own journey. And it's about discovering which journey is the one I'm on right now. If you don't look for that journey, you will find no structure in life. It's, it's everything that I've hoped in many ways, this conversation with Harold about what, you know, we, we've been publishing our, our newspaper for 11, 12 years, and you know, we've been doing so much online as well. And everything really, like I'm, I'm at a little loss for words myself, and I didn't have any idea on how this conversation was gonna go. But you know, I'm pleased to see it being brought down to a point, shall we say, of um, the transformation that most people ask for. You know, everyone wants to be healed. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to be healthy. And you know, if, I, if, I, if I'm allowed to paraphrase, you really have to see how you haven't been so nice in one way or many, whether it's this lifetime or a hundred other lifetimes. And you know, as Harold put it, you know, and I've seen as well. Once you take on the fact that you've done an action that, that hasn't been uh, uh, perceived as, as loving, well, it, it, the laughter does follow after that because you know the forgiveness comes in admitting how you've been not so nice and then you get to see how you are and then the whole system of tyranny and fears and, 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 and the corona garbage and all this other bullshit going on no longer has a hold on you because you have a hold on yourself you know, in, in, in your direction in life. And, uh, and I think this is a beautiful story of the lady that, you know, a lot of people have asked us, well, what if I was you know, raped in this life? I've seen it, or I was sexually assaulted, or, you know, take your pick, or my father did this bad thing, my mother did this bad thing, my friends did this bad thing. I mean, I've heard hundreds of these stories, as I'm sure Harold has in his life. And, you know, it's happening perhaps in relation to the story that was just shared here right now, so that you can see that you too have been that perpetrator. You know, you too have done that, whether it's not this life, it might be another life. And through, through the forgiveness, and I don't mean, you know, saying, oh, it's okay, but I'm better than them. It's kind of like saying, oh, my goodness, you know, I am doing the same thing in my way, or I have done it, or I'm still doing it. Maybe it's to yourself, maybe it's to others, maybe it's both. And, you know, I've had to sit and see how I've been an asshole to myself, for lack of a better way to put it, and not so nice to my friends, and, you know, and allow that to really hit me in order to... Uh, uh, get to a place of, of the strength that I've always wanted that doesn't really come from being, you know, a gruff, mean, whatever man or, or a pleasing woman, so to speak. I mean, we both have those aspects inside of us, you know, the male and female ways of doing things. And uh, just by allowing that inner strength or your metal to grow that, uh, you know, everything you've always wanted, but you didn't uh, know how it could come to you, you make a space to allow that to grow, I would feel, you know, in being honest with you know, and it could be past lives, it could be this life, it could be all of the above. But uh, you know, it's through this, uh, through this uh, effort, I guess, like, like, how did you bring the lady, I'm curious, to that level of understanding of what she saw in a previous life of being not the victim, but also, you know, the, the perpetrator of, let's say, evil, if you like, or something not so nice? It's two things mainly mainly she brought herself because she was desperate she was at her lowest po lowest point there was no attempt to avoid anything she was 100% willing to go through everything whatever it was she didn't judge herself she just wanted to go through that needle and experience relief and that was her step of development at that point and her decision and nothing I did. The only thing where the people come into play is um, when I when I talk my voice has a certain signature that signals what parts of myself are conscious? What parts of myself are connected in what ways? Mm. If, for example, I, if I wouldn't feel anger, if I would have 
a complete blockage on anger, then certain lower tones of my voice would not ring. Right. Um, then I would maybe rather sound like this with a very creepy high-pitched voice and uh, everybody would try to beat me because they exactly know that I have no defenses up because my voice is so pop. Yeah, but if if I speak differently, I speak differently on, and every single quality of spirit has a certain expression on that level. Right. And this is how I can encode my state of wholeness, put it in my voice, and another body, another spirit can decode how it feels like to be healed. This is one step. It's only a small help. If I did go through the healing process in my lifetime, I also can express the signature of the healing process. And this is incredibly powerful. If you have the healing process encoded in your system, um, A, you can be compassionate about what's happening in the other. Like, like oh, whatever, really <laughs> creepy, creepy ways to work with each other. Somebody looking for whatever um, stupid example, um, abuse memory, showing all the signs of sexual abuse but can't remember what happened. Scanning her own memory, her own brain for what the heck happened. And I'm just in compassion because I have no blockage on that topic anymore because I unraveled my abused history and my abuse history and my entire spirit is open on that topic. I can compassionately feel every single motion in her system, consciously and subconsciously. So I can see how close she gets to the point where she can open herself up to her memory. I can feel everything. And when I see that she's getting close to the point where a solution can be possible, I just say something stupid like there's the door. Five seconds before she even sees it, but by saying it, I can point out exactly the path in her perception of herself that leads her into that portal that opens up the memory to what she needs to see inside of herself. And this is, I don't think you can learn it somewhere. It's, it's, it's a practice that comes first from the self-healing that is done. So you can only be as compassionate, as conscious you are. This is one thing. So you can't heal somebody from a condition you haven't solved yourself. Mm because you can't feel it. It's in the customer's subconscious, it's in your subconscious, and they don't communicate. Especially they can't communicate a solution because it's not given yet. But if the solution is there and it's all conscious, then it's easy to inspire people to find the right healing path. If they are at the point that they are willing to go there. And then, it's miraculous, but it's trivial, close to trivial, easy. It just happens. I remember a lady that knew how it worked. She actually wanted to torture me with questions after a, a lecture. And then she just sat down in, in, in the hidden corner of that lecturing room, turned her face to the wall, asked herself all the questions, she had and let the answers come in. She, afterwards, she came to me and said, well, I came with questions, but I decided to just embed myself in your aura, ask myself the questions and the answers came. And I kept sitting there for one and a half hours crying all the time. Mm -hmm. And thank you, it helped. I didn't do anything. It's, it's the power of inspiration. And this is what gives me this. It's not even hope. It's knowing that humanity will be all right because this is a bushfire. 
inspiration is a bushfire, when this starts to burn, people inspire each other to healing mm. in a speed we can't even imagine. This, it's, we don't have a historic memory. Maybe the last time it happened is when Christianity spread over three continents, burning itself into Africa, burning itself into Asia, burning itself into Europe, because somebody just grabbed that idea that way. We do have a loving God and not a punishing one. Mm. And this was tangible and it popped from one to the next by inspiration seeing it passing on this ability of perception. And they couldn't kill the Christians um, fast enough so to, to contain that. So they had to declare the Catholic Church to be state religion, to get access to something where they could reinsert her black magic control system to somehow contain this inspirational pattern. And we are very close to experiencing something like that again. I would agree. I would agree. I think, you know, the, 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 the monsters that be, you know, are, are doing so much to try and steer humanity away from that, this whole, uh, you know, Corona scandemic garbage that it must be <laughs> You know, I think it's the old thing. I think doth thou protest too much, as I think Shakespeare said, or if, even if it was him who did that quote. And, you know, the fact that they're fighting so hard to move humanity in a certain direction probably means they're moving in another direction, you know, or we're at that time where we're about to allow ourselves to move in this other direction because there's so much of an effort to corral the people and their consciousness and their fears and their way to be alive in a, in, in a way that, they wouldn't be putting this much effort into it if it wasn't required, right? And so to see the the other side of the coin, as Harold said, you know, if you see where they're pushing and then you get to see what they're pushing against, you know, it's the negative of the positive. Uh, well, and a lot of people are waking up to it, you know, like, like I'm talking with Harold, I talked with another fellow today who's an educator in the States, you know, alternative uh, university educator and so many other people that are just going, you know, that's enough. You know, I, I've been looking at this and I've been seeing this and I've been noticing this. And now other people, uh, you know, smaller people, so to speak, or normal people or people that have decided they don't want to hide the trauma anymore. Uh, uh, maybe it's come to a point where it's untenable, you know, to sit in your lie and your illusions. And, and then we get to see people like Harold and other people I've chatted with that are going, you know, it's not so bad. You know, you face it. You know, maybe you have a physical ailment. You know, you know, I've had a foot problem. I've had to sit down for the last couple of months and understand what was going on. Like, why did I suddenly get a pain on my foot? It was hard to walk. And I got to see in my own experience, I was walking away from myself. You know, I was spending my time just walking outside, let's say, instead of walking inside. And, uh, and to see where, to where I needed to, you know, walk in my own inner world and, and figure out where I have been. In, as Harold said, you know, traumatic to myself and others, and, and it's been working, you know, and, you know, Harold had his spleen challenges, and maybe that gave him the ability to have to go into his own inner world more, and to look and see what was going on, you know, inside him so that he can bring it out and share, you know, I've been trying to talk with Harold for literally a few years now, you know, we, we've been in touch a little bit here and there, and, and everything in its right time, and, you know, now with what we have in, we're developing our online uh, community, uh, to, I guess, the bottom line, to, to walk in the ways that we've been discussing in this chat here, you know, feeling how to heal yourself and what's required from that. And, and, you know, something I've shared for a long time is the resources are there. Information like what Harold is sharing is there. There's nothing but help if you want it. You know, there's nothing but information mm -hmm. and how others have done it and how it's possible for you to do it for yourself, which is required. You know, in my opinion, no one can move you there. You know, there are no such things as healers or saviors for you. You know, you, you walked your life to where you are. So you kind of got to walk it back to how you would like to be. Um, there's one thing that is good to know, because many people think we are in a battle between good and evil. And if we think that this is a battle, it is a battle and one will win. If we change our perspective and take it as an experience instead of a battle, um, we come into a win-win situation. 
Um, and this works in a, in a certain way when, when I get attacked, and I did get attacked quite a few times over the last years, and I realize, oops, this attack goes through. Um, it's an opportunity for me to learn something about a weakness of mine. Mm. Like, for example, with a, with a ruptured spleen, I had a friend over and uh, he was more like that party guy for a couple of years and had all his party friends on uh, those and other drugs. And he kept bringing his friends here for spiritual experience and healing and whatever. Um and one of them had quite a traumatic history and he carried a demon, actually two of them, but one of them started to mess around on my farm, mess with people. And I just said, okay, you know, actually I, I decided not to be on that density anymore where demons exist, but seeing what this, what havoc this thing caused, I just stepped down into that density and decided to clear it. And it was a quite mm -hmm. wise decision to do so because that demon was attached to the topic of self-worth mm. and from all the pain he harvested from his host. He had built a beautiful weapon and before I could take him out, he managed to punch my spleen with a weapon made out of this pain. And for three days, I just thought, okay, I've got this energetic problem here. I need to clean it. But then I realized, okay, you know, now the spleen is inflamed and now it's going bigger and bigger, coming to the limit what the organ can take and burst open. So um, that was a really close call, but it forced me to deal with the topic of self-worth and devaluation on a deeper level because the weapon was made out of that and when I tried to clear the organ energetically other topics related to the same emotions popped up and I had to clear oh, I don't know five stories connected to self-worth and spleen that were sitting still as trauma in that organ so yeah i could say that was a battle and this stupid demon almost managed to kill him i might kind of pull myself out and say you should should have seen the other guy <laughs> but <clears throat> um, actually i can just be thankful that it happened because it was an opportunity to learn something about myself and clear that and now i know my spleen is invulnerable because there's no resonance left. And like this, it's a win-win situation. Either there's no resonance and then there's no battle because they can't reach out to you anymore. And if they manage to find a resonance point, um, don't focus on the war aspect, focus on the learning aspect and the experience aspect and try to learn as much as possible about your own weaknesses, about your own vulnerability, find the points that need healing, fix it. And there's no physical condition that doesn't get better if you heal the spiritual part. Yes, yes. You know, I found it in, in, in those wise words that were just shared, it's why protests don't work, it's why trying to change the laws don't work, it's why trying to change voting doesn't work. It's why they're arguing about the vaccines. I mean, with so many people saying we should do some action, sign this protest, or you know, we should do some action. You know, take a card and go downtown and tell the politicians to stop it. And you're missing the forest for the trees in that you know the challenges are happening. You know, as Harold said, so that you can find your own weakness where you're not in control of yourself, where you're not allowing yourself to heal, where you're leading yourself down a bad path. Let's say. You know, everything you think the politicians or the people that in the media are doing, chances are, in my opinion, you're doing it to yourself. And that's why you're seeing it on the outside world. And as long as you're trying to say they should change, they should change, and I'll have a better life, it's never going to make your life better, you know, uh, mm. ever. Because, you know, the fingers got to come back and go, 
my goodness, I should change. I should change. I should change. And maybe they're mm-hmm. showing you what needs to be healed. You know, if they're lying or they're duplicitous or they're dangerous or they're unhealthy. And it's a good way to understand that maybe the world is just sharing with you how you're lying to yourself, how you're duplicitous, how you're unhealthy, how you're not mm-hmm. being kind, you know, how you're trying to trick people or take your living away or take your energy away, or your money, your abundance, you know, whatever you're blaming someone else for. Generally, if you bring it home to roost, you find you have the power to heal it. And Mm -hmm. thus, there are really no victims, in my opinion. You know, there's only the abilities to get strong. The the most beautiful uh, cardboard I I saw from from demonstrations in the U.S. was a lady carrying a, a sign. I think it was pushing a fake pandemic and creating mass awakening instead. Mm. And this is the beauty of it all. Mm. I'm, I'm not angry with them trying to make that move. I mean, this is what they went, went for all the time. This is their coronation they are trying. And um, if they wouldn't try it, we would be sitting with them in one boat for the next 2,000 years. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So let them discredit themselves to the bone. It's beautiful. And for those people who want to be in that boat, I'm also happy because now they see what they get. It's true. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. You know, it's a good way to put it. So free choice, free choice is all I can demand because I'm not judging. I can't say that the experience of being a biorobot is more or less beautiful than uh, to be a creative, godly entity. This one is the one thing. The other thing is the other thing. I can't judge who goes for what experience. And if mm-hmm. people go for the biorobot experience, wow, tough luck. You know me, right? my respect. I wouldn't have the courage to go for that. It's I've I've been going for quite heavy stuff in my incarnations. I've been quite a dark places, but being a bio robot that has this um, train of thoughts in his brain coming in from a central computer telling him that it's right to slaughter people and to do all sorts of completely weird stuff while his spirit is sitting on the bench beside him, like, oh, what the heck am I doing down there? You know, this is what a biorobot is being completely disconnected, mm-hmm. following command lines. And all the people who sit in the, in the buses and undergrounds morphing themselves with the machine voluntarily this is where they want to go and this is wow what a tough program they're on what a tough experience and if this is what source wants to experience as the highest grade of separation you can think of and this is what source wants to experience and i can just pay my respect to the the single beings that want to make that experience for source, not judging how. It's relaxing. It, you know, it, does, it doesn't change the horror in front of your eyes, you know, when, when you watch people doing it. No. But, but you know, I, I've noticed people have been wearing masks, masks their whole lives. You know, it's just more obvious now. When people have been hiding from their truth. You know, it's just more obvious now. You know, I've been pretending for a long time to fit in and, you know, it's just more obvious that I can't now, you know, I, we've all grown up in, 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 in that aspect where, as Harold said, you try and be a pleaser. In other words, you try and fit in with what people think you should be doing and, you know, that'll bring the experience it brings until you decide that you want to do something else with your life. And, and it's here. You know, I have to say from what Harold sees, it is beautiful. I think uh, it's a good way to put it. There, you can see if you want to go on that boat, you know, you know you're know, you going with the monsters and, and they're not hiding it anymore. And if that's the kind of life you want, good luck. You know, you'll, you'll get the experience you're asking for. And as he said, it's wow. I can't, uh, yeah, I can't even imagine how horrible, in my opinion, that's going to be for your heart, uh, you know, or your soul or your spiritual being. And you want to go on the other boat, it looks harder. But in the end, 
you know, it'll be more loving and more beneficial again, in my opinion. And it's great that we have free will to make that choice or else, uh, you know, you can be as lousy as you want to be with your free will or as free as you want to be with your free will. And I guess that's, that's the beauty of free will. There's, there, there's, there's, there's every option available. And I guess for us to be infinite beings, you have to have the ability to be infinitely stupid as you do to be infinitely something else. I mean, it wouldn't work any other way. You know, if, uh, if everything is possible, by definition, everything is possible. Well, this is beautiful. Like, Harold, I've enjoyed this conversation more than I could have imagined. You know, th thank you so much for taking time. Per perhaps we're, we're, at, we're at a spot here to leave a lot of this, you know, with our readers right now. You know, I'm uh, delighted uh, to do more work with you or to do more creations with you as mm -hmm. possible. And as we both would love, you know, this has been amazing for me. I'm certainly open to you sharing any of those writings with our readers, if you like. If uh, you had mentioned, I believe that you were... Did, did you mention earlier you were doing some writing in relation to this? And if not, uh, you know, I'm totally open to seeing how our viewers can support you. You know, I'll, I'll leave some information mm -hmm. below from this video uh, on, on uh, what Harold shares with me once we get off the line, so to speak, and how you can do some more follow throughs if you, if you like and he likes. And uh, uh, we are certainly open to questions and suggestions here. You know, please leave uh, them below and we'll pass them along where they need to go. And uh, you know, let's be free together or, uh, and see, see, see how life uh, develops. Is there anything you'd like to leave our readers with or our viewers with, Harold? De definitely, I will send you that one paper on covert narcissism and people pleaser codependencies. Um, it's a longer one, as it looks like. I'm already at page eight or something like that. So it's going to be more an essay than an article. And... Uh, yeah, I can, can send my former company website as a link with all the older publications. Especially for people who just know me from YouTube. Um, there's some paperwork I have done in the past that is more professional than the talks. I would love to. I mean, I mean for me, it's, it's taking the deep dive that he's done in his life and other people have done, and it's bringing it back to a human level of what you can do, which gets asked over and over. So many people are going, look at what's going on. Look at the craziness, look at whatever, from the parasites down to the, the politicians, over to the evil, or to the banking system, to the monetary system, all that distractive stuff, in my opinion. You know, what can I do? What can I do? And in my opinion, that's been shared in this talk. You know, uh, what you can do, what anybody can do, uh, you know, without having even a dollar in your pocket, you know, or... Uh, or, or, or whatever, a yen or, 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 a, or, a, euro, or a, uh, a euro or whatever you want to call your monetary system or your crypto bonanza. Uh, you know, all you really need to do is, is, you know, is have a dedication in your heart to, to face yourself, grow with some metal and to see where that takes you. And you don't need anyone's permission to do so. So for me, that's the best news ever is if you want to be free and you want to do the work, you know, there may be a million steps ahead of you, but you know now that at least for some of us, there has been a path out of this nonsense. You know, I'm not saying I'm free by any stretch of the imagination. I have to do the work every day. Every time I open my eyes, I face my own stupidity. If I'm not watching it, it jumps me. The monster Harold talks about follows me around all the time. You know, the monsters of fear, the monsters of whatever, you know, take your pick and what they maybe say to you about how you're not uh, as loving or good as you would like to be. And it's a constant battle of awareness. I don't want to say battle, but let's say it's a constant effort of awareness. I like the way you put it. It's not really a battle. It's more like, you know, you become aware of what it is you have to do and what you're facing. And then it allows you to intelligently do what is required for your life to make it how you would like to live. And I think that uh, should be the whole of, of, of how you judge things, in my opinion. Thank you so much, Harold. I appreciate it. I'll leave the links below. Anything at all, let us know. If you have any topics for future conversations, I'm open to them as well. And uh, again, thank you so much, Harold, for joining us. I very much appreciate this chat. Freedom